What's up guys, let's revisit the Galaxy S21 Ultra. This is such a fantastic phone and one of my number one recommendations. This and the Note 20 Ultra. Um, but this one in particular is just really, really nice guys. Like if I didn't have any phones and I was just getting into like trying to find an old flagship, I would 100% get this phone uh, over any phone. So I want to go into why that is. Let's start off with the price. You can find these in excellent condition for $359. I think eBay currently has the best price. Amazon pretty much has the same price as well too actually. Um, so yeah, so you can find this phone roughly $360. Um, this is such a fantastic buy guys. And I want to start off actually with the design. The design is what really uh, makes this phone special. So. For a big phone like this with a 6.8 inch display, as you can see with an S23 Ultra, it has the S23 has a more, you know, boxy, sharper sort of design, and it's not super comfortable in the hand. Now Samsung has sort of like, you know, they know that and they kind of like made the the edges of this phone a little bit more boxier, easier to hold, but it still doesn't make it to where it's you know not cutting into the palm. The S21 Ultra, it actually is super smooth. Uh, that's one thing that I kind of miss about the S series in general before Samsung just kind of merged it with the Note. Um, it's it's very easy to hold, man. Even if you have small hands, it's very easy to hold. And since this is like curving right here, um, it fits in the palm really well. So you don't have to worry about it kind of being uncomfortable. Um, that is the number one thing I love about this phone. I think the design has still aged really well. You can see Samsung got rid of this, you know, camera cut out right here. Um, but it's still a really nice looking design. I think it still has that kind of cool sci-fi uh, look to it as well too. And then you also have a matte finish on here as well. So you can't really see the fingerprints. And it's IP68 dust and water resistant. And a lot of people forget this phone actually does have pin support. So I'll show you guys. Now you can buy like a special case for it, but it has pin support. It does the same thing that the the uh, S you know 23 does. It, so you can use the pin support on here just fine. All right, so let's talk about the display a little bit here. So big display at 6.8 inches. It is a slightly curved display, but the thing I like about this phone in particular is that it's not like aggressively curved like let's say like a s22 ultra or something like that it's just a slight curve which i think it still looks really good and has that premium you know feel to it uh from rumors that we're hearing samsung's actually going completely flat uh this year with the s24 um but this display is really really nice guys it's a 6.8 inch dynamic amoled display it's 120 hertz and it's full uh, 1440p as well too. It's 515 for the PPI, HDR10, 1500 nits, uh, peak brightness on here. So in direct sunlight, uh, it's still going to look really good. The reason why I really like this phone is because I like to recommend this and the Note, but the thing about the Note is that you can't actually use the Note's display in 1440p with 120 hertz. This phone, you can completely use it um, you know, 120 hertz, 1440p, and it looks beautiful. Everything's super sharp, icons, all that super sharp, great color, punch hole in the middle. It is a fantastic display, and like I said, the number one thing here, and again, for, for people with smaller hands, is that it's easy to hold, guys. It's much, much more easier to hold than uh, the Note or any type of, you know, boxy phone. So that's what I really like about the display on here. Now, I think the number one selling point with this phone honestly has to be that this phone is getting Android 14 and it's getting Android 15 as well too, and it will get security patches uh, after that. So this phone has a still a pretty long lifespan, even considering the fact that it came out in 2021 and we're going into 2024, it's still going to get you know two major OS updates and security patches as well too. Um, it is absolutely phenomenal. Like I'm really excited about that. Um, I hope, hopefully, Samsung keeps increasing the software support for older phones. Um, but this thing is not slowing down by any means. It is blazing fast. Um, it is just super fast. You guys can see just like scrolling and stuff like that, opening up web browsers. Um, it's just super, super fast. It feels like it doesn't feel any different from the S23 Ultra, in my opinion. Software-wise, like I said, everything is here. Uh, the pin support is here, desktop support is here, reverse wireless charging, secure folders, everything is here. So you're not, you're legit not missing out on anything. 
Now, when it comes to gaming and stuff like that, this phone has actually gotten better with age. So this phone, when it came out, it wasn't compatible with 90 frames for PUBG, but now we have 90 frames on PUBG now. And it feels just like, you know, playing on the S23 Ultra, honestly. Uh, it's super smooth, and as you guys can see, uh, it is just an excellent experience uh, with gaming. Now, I will say this. This phone, it does heat up a little bit more than I would like compared to something like the S23. Um, but I've never had this thing actually crash on me. And remember, there are two models. You have the Snapdragon model and the Xenos model, so I've never been able to use the Xenos model. Um, but this is the Snapdragon 888 processor, 128 gigs of internal storage, 12 gigs of RAM on the base model, and it does a phenomenal job with gaming. Uh, so if you on a budget, you want to play PUBG or pretty much any game, Call of Duty, Fortnite, and you want to play competitively, uh, this is a good phone for that. Um, like I said, it does get a little bit warmer than I would like. Um, but again, I've never had any performance problems. I never had it crash on me or anything like that. Um, so yeah, so act actually, it's a phenomenal phone for gaming, I have to say. I've never had an issue. Just overall, super fast phone. Let's check out these speakers at max volume. So the speakers are pretty good on here, a good amount of bass, they're actually better than the S22 Ultra speakers, which I think some of Samsung's worst speakers, um, but the speakers still sound pretty good on here uh, for the most part. Good amount of bass, it sounds pretty clear. Uh, this phone also has the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner on it as well too. You also have the face unlock you could take advantage of as well. So the cameras on the S21 Ultra are still pretty good in my opinion. Um, I did a comparison with the cameras on here in the S23 and a lot of people were you know, pretty impressed um, with the cameras on this phone. I think it still gives a really good amount of detail, pretty good color, great dynamic range, pretty decent low light shots as well too. The selfie camera is pretty decent as well. Um, overall, I did not have an issue with the images on here. I don't think anybody would take pictures with this phone and have an issue with image quality. I mean, it, it still looks extremely good. It has a 108 megapixel uh, main sensor, so you get a lot of detail. And then you also have a 10 megapixel periscope telephoto. It has 10 times optical. And then a 10 megapixel telephoto as well that has three times uh, zoom. And then you have a 12 megapixel ultra wide. It shoots in 8K24. And then you have a 40 megapixel selfie cam that shoots in 4K60. Uh, video on here is really good. Um, I, I legit have zero complaints with the cameras on here. Um, like I said, it pretty much still has a very modern camera setup. You still have excellent zoom quality. You have the 100 times zoom and stuff like that. Um, it takes excellent photos at 10 times, even 30 times. It still gives out a really good shot. The cameras are still really good. Zero complaints with the cameras. All right, so battery life is just okay on this phone. It's not anything too crazy. And to be honest, Samsung really didn't make any type of good battery leap with their flagships until the, the S23 Ultra. So just recently, we got really good battery life on these Samsung flagships. Um, but the S21 Ultra, it's got a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. It's got 25 watt wire charging, which honestly is kind of slow uh, for 2023. Uh, most phones, you know, Samsung now has 45 watts, uh, which is interesting because the Note 10 Plus, I believe, has 45 watts, but this one didn't get it. Um, but yeah, it's got wireless, reverse wireless charging on here, so you can charge, you know, your headphones on the back of these or something like that. Um, battery life is just okay. It's like six hours of screen on time. It's technically a full day, but, you know, this is one of those phones where if you were doing like gaming and stuff like that, you're definitely going to have to charge it. Um, but besides that, it's an actual phenomenal phone and the price is just going to keep coming down and it's just a great buy considering that the cameras are still good, design is still excellent, display processor is still good, it's getting updates. So if you have one of these, you know, and you're thinking about upgrading, honestly I will hold it until you really feel like it's worth an upgrade. I would probably hold it to like Galaxy X S26 or something like that. Um, not S, no, yeah, S26. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so what do you guys think? 
Be sure to let me know in the comments down below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.